Hello YouTubers, Crone Education here with another video on statistics. Specifically, we'll cover logistic regression and how it differs from multiple linear regression or simple linear regression. And before we get started, let's talk about the data that I'll be using. And I'll run this here quick for you so you can see what we're working with. There will be three variables, age, gender, and status. And I took this data, you can probably find this online somewhere, it models the Donner Party. The Donner Party was a group of families who tried to move from Illinois to California, and then essentially they get caught in this big snowstorm, a lot of the people end up dying. So over here for status, this is whether they're alive or dead, or what at the time, whether they died or survived. So one equals survive, zero equals the person died. Now our ultimate goal here of this example is that we're going to try and determine if age and gender had any influence on whether the person ended up dead or alive, and if we can uh, essentially predict whether the person would would have ended up dying or would have ended up surviving based upon their age and gender. And before we go any further, I'd like to now talk about the difference in assumptions between uh, simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, and logistic regression. So I have a nice little table here. In simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, we assume that errors are independent, errors are normally distributed, errors have constant variance, and that there is a linear relationship between the predictor and the response. And now we could test each of these things as well. So we might do a white test for constant variance and shepherd wilk test for normally distributed. So we could test each of these things, but ultimately we're assuming that each of these are satisfied. In logistic regression, we don't have to assume that all of these things are going to be satisfied. In fact, we don't have to test and make sure that they're all actually being satisfied either. So the only thing that we need to make sure is that there's uh, that the errors are independent. And that's really our big assumption for logistic regression. We aren't going to be uh, concerned whether the errors are normally distributed or whether they have constant variance. Now this last one here is a bit tricky. It says linear relationship between the predictor and the response. In logistic regression, it is not a linear relationship specifically between the predictor and the response, but there is a linear relationship between the predictors and the logit of the response. And we'll talk about that in a second here once we get, uh, once we go over our models. So let's go back into SAS and I'll give us some uh, bit crude versions of our models here in this text editor. Now, when we were in multiple linear regression, this is what we assumed our model to be. And I'll just put this here in a comment. So in multiple linear regression, we assumed, and I'm going to model just this specific situation but we would have y is equal to beta 0 for the intercept, plus beta 1, the coefficient for the x1 predictor, and then beta 2, the coefficient for the x2 predictor, and then we'd have some error at the end, this is the true error epsilon that we don't really know. And then once we actually predict this regression line, this would change the y hats, these might go to lowercase b's, and then uh, this would essentially be a residual then, but this wouldn't be included in the y hat model. So that's our multiple linear regression model. So now let's do our uh, logistic regression model. Our logistic regression model is going to be a bit different here. So lo the logistic regression model, I said that there is a linear relationship between the logit of the response and then the predictors. So here is the logit of the response. It's going to be the natural log of, this is typically represented with a pi, but it's just the probability divided by one minus the probability. And then it's just equal to, notice that the right side is essentially the same, except there's no error term here. So this is not an estimate, but there's still no error term. So unlike multiple linear regression, we have no true error term at the end. So we have our logistic model now. So let's talk a little bit more about what we can do with this. Notice that when I was going over the data, I said that our response variable, which is the status, can take on two values, one or zero, and that's really essentially what separates the logistic model from multiple linear regression. Because in our logistic model, y can only take on two possible var uh, values. It's essentially a binary variable. It can be zero or it can be one, and that is it. Now the nice thing about our logistic model is that it makes it very easy to calculate the odds of, say, our response being one, or the probability of our response being one. And that's what really this model lends itself to doing. And I can show you this with a simple odds calculation now. So let's say we wanted to calculate odds. And what I mean by odds is the same thing as when you're gambling on a horse. Maybe it's four to one odds, which means it's really, if it's four to one odds, it means it's four out of five in your favor that the horse is going to win or 80% chance. So 
Let's do an odds calculation. And essentially, all you do is you just raise both sides, say e to the both sides, and then you can get rid of this natural log. And then this is all raised on the right side now. So now the odds is essentially going to be this entire left side of the equation. So p divided by 1 minus p. So now the nice thing here is that let's say we know the age, we know the gender, then it's very easy to calculate the odds because then we could just plug the age into B1, I mean uh, X1, and plug the gender into X2, and there we have it. Then we'll be able to calculate the odds very easy once we have our estimated regression equation. We'll still need to get that first though. And while we're here, I'll show the probability equation as well. And the probability equation is going to be very similar. Uh, this just took some algebra manipulation. And if you know your algebra, you'll be able to easily get this to this form. But essentially, just solve for p over here. And once you do that, it'll be e to the beta 0. And this is these dots just represent this right-hand portion here. I just didn't write it all out. but And then divided by 1 plus e to the beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2, so on. So let's say we wanted uh, the probability of survival given the fact that x1 is equal to some age and x2 is equal to some gender. Well, then we could go ahead and just plug those values in with our estimated regression equation, and then we could find the probability, which is probably really more interesting to us than the odds. Let's say it would be very useful to have uh, this person with this age and this gender has an 87% chance of surviving. Okay, and we've hit the point now where you're probably saying, well, you were talking about this estimated regression equation, how do we get it? Well, SAS will give it to us very simply here, and it's very similar to PROC REG that we used in multiple and simple linear regression, but here now it's going to be PROC logistic. So PROC logistic data equals just our data is called die, and then similar to PROC uh, REG, we're going to say model status, which is our response, equals to age and gender. Now before we run this, let's just take a second and note this comment I have here. I'm using the descending option after proc logistic. So what does that do? Descending tells SAS to model ones rather than zeros. So by default, uh, SAS is going to model the zeros. So if we were to calculate the probability, it would actually be the probability of dying instead of the probability of surviving. Well for this example, I want to specifically know the probability and the odds of surviving or the probability of the uh, response equaling 1. So I'm going to say descending, which will switch SAS and tell it to model the 1s rather than the zeros. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and we'll talk about how to interpret this printout. Now, the very first thing we want to establish is our model, and we want to be able to find those coefficients for our predictors. And this will be very easy, same procedure as PROC REG. We go down here where it says intercept, age, and gender. And then here are the estimates for each of these. So intercept, 3.23, age, negative 0.07, and gender, negative 1.59. So now, to form our estimated regression equation, all we need to do is take these estimates and then plug them in for beta 0, age for beta 1, and then this for beta 2. And that will give us our estimated regression equation. Now for the remainder of the video here, I want to talk about uh, the three big tests we can do, which is the overall test, the individual test for each predictor, and then a partial test, similar to the partial F test. So let's start with the overall test. The null hypothesis for the overall test is that each predictor is equal to zero, meaning each of them is insignificant. And then the alternate hypothesis for the overall test is that at least one of them is significant. So typically this is the test that is done first just to make sure that at least one of the predictors is significant in predicting the response. So this is very easy to find in this printout because it says, here we go, testing global null hypothesis beta equals zero, meaning testing that they all, uh, all the betas are equal to zero. Now I believe typically all three of these will yield similar results, but I always use the likelihood ratio and we see that there is a p-value of 0.0051. So even if we chose an alpha of 0.05, we would still reject because the p-value ends up being less than our alpha. So alpha is a pretty high p-value, 95%. So uh, that would still indicate that at least one of our betas is significant. So that's pretty easy. Let's go on now to the individual tests. Now the big difference here that you probably already noticed is that when we did multiple and simple linear regression, this was a t-statistic. And then we had the probability for the t-statistic right here. 
But instead, notice we have this walled chi-square. Well, how do we calculate that walled chi-square? Let me pull up the calculator. I'll show you how we calculate that when we have our estimate and our standard error. So let's just do, uh, let's do age. So age has 0 0.0782, and that is a negative. And then we have a standard error of 0 0.0373. So now when we did the t-statistic, it was just estimate divided by standard error. But now that we're doing walled chi-square, it'll be a bit different. It's going to be estimate divided by standard error, the quantity squared. So let's divide by standard error, 0, 0.373. And now let's go ahead and square, and we get 4.395, 4.39, which is incredibly similar to what SAS gives us here. And then the p-value is just going to be one degree of freedom and it's always going to be right tail for the chi-square distribution. Now the hypotheses for these are the going to be the same as that individual t-test. So it would be, if we were testing age, it would be beta 1 is equal to 0 for the null, and then the alternate hypothesis would be beta 1 is not equal to 0. And now you have to remember that this is the marginal contribution. So this is the contribution of age, given that the rest of the model stays the same. So this is saying, is age significant? given that gender and the intercept are already in the model. And now again, let's say our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Well, we have a p-value of 0 0.03, so we would go ahead and reject since our p-value is less than alpha, and then we would reject the null and assume that age is significant. And you could essentially do that for each of these, and we would find that they are all significant with an alpha of equal to 0 0.05. All right, and the last test is just going to be uh, the partial test, and this is really equivalent to the partial F test, and essentially it's saying let's construct a reduced model and let's determine if this reduced model is sufficient to replace that full model. So let's just say that this is our full model. The full model includes intercept, age, and gender, and let's say that our reduced model only contains the intercept. And the reason I'm doing this is really just uh, it already provides us with this printout and this comparison, so it'll be nice and easy for us to calculate. But now, the nice, easy way to do this, and if you remember from multiple linear regression, we had actually a fairly complicated formula for our F statistic, but here it's going to be very simple. We're going to use this negative two log L, and all we're going to do is subtract the reduced minus the full, and that will give us our statistic, and it'll be, in uh, again, in a chi-squared distribution. So we're going to take uh, our reduced, which is going to be our intercept only, which will be 61.827. And then we're going to subtract 51.256, 51.256, and that will be 10.571. So now this gives us a chi-squared statistic in 10.571. And the degrees of freedom are essentially going to be uh, the degrees of freedom of difference between the full and the reduced. So here there are two more predictors, and in the reduced there are essentially two less. So it's going to be two degrees of freedom, 10.571 in a chi-square, and then that should enable you to find your p-value. Now I just found this p-value using just the TI-83, and it looks like it is 0 0.005. So now what does that mean to us? The null hypothesis for this is the reduced model. So it's essentially whatever betas need to equal zero to get you to the reduced model, that's your null hypothesis. So in this case, it would be beta one equals zero, beta two equals zero. Now, so that's our null for our alternate then, it's going to be the full model. So we want to essentially see if we can reject this, re reject this reduced model. And in this case, since our p-value is 0 0.005, we can go ahead and reject it. So we'll reject that reduced model because we need to use this full model according to that p-value that we received. And now you might be saying, well, what if the situation is more complicated than this? What if we have, say, five predictors, and you want to test if two of them are equal to zero, and that's what ends up giving you the reduced model? Well, you can certainly still do that. You're just going to have to run proc logistic twice, and then that's going to end up giving you two values here for the negative two log L, and then that's what you'll end up subtracting. So you won't use this intercept only anymore. You'll use the reduced statistic, subtracted, and then, well, and then subtract the full statistic, and that's what will give you your chi-square statistic. Again, make sure that the degrees of freedom is just going to be the amount that are set equal to zero.
So we've now covered the big tests that we can do using this printout. And the last thing I'd like to do is just some concrete examples involving this data. So let's say I want to answer this question. What are the odds that a female one-year-old child will survive given the data that we have? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to come up with our estimated regression line. And giving our parameter estimates from the printout, I have this here for us. It's going to be P divided by one minus P. Again, P represents probability is equal to e to the, and then here we have it, 3.2304 minus, and then we have age and gender with their coefficients. Now, so let's start out by calculating odds. So we're going to do odds first, not probability. Well, calculating the odds is very simple. This is uh, essentially the equation for odds. We just need to now plug in, and then we'll have our odds once we plug in for age and gender. So we know the age, the age is one, the gender is female, and I don't know if I stated this up here. Yes, yes I did. For female, female is equal to zero. So now that's essentially just going to zero out this whole term. So now all we need to do is take e to the 3.2304 minus 0 0.0782, and that is going to give, our, give us our odds, which it looks like it ends up coming out to be 23.39. Now I'd say the average person does not deal with odds on a daily basis. Maybe, maybe you gamble more than me, but let's now determine the probability. The probability should be a more useful number to us. So let's say, what is the probability that a female one-year-old child will survive? So now the probability is going to be a bit different calculation. We essentially just need to take the last thing that we saw, uh, last thing that we had and solve it for P. So let's take this and our probability is going to be P is equal to 23.39 divided by one plus 23.39. And once you solve that out, that should give you 0 0.959, which is the probability, we can write this in a percent, which is 95.9%. Now, you might be thinking that is very high, but if you do this again for, let's say, someone that is 75 years old, their odds of survival is going to go down significantly. I'm sorry, old people, if you're put in the same, uh, same situation, your odds of survival will be much lower. Okay, but that does it for logistic regression. Uh, before I leave, I'll tell you one thing that I left out of this model was an interaction term. And it's very easy to add this in if you're working in a model that you know you need to include the interaction. If you want to include it, proc logistic enables us to just put age times gender and this will automatically generate the interaction term. There's no need to go back up to the data and add a whole new variable. So then you can just run this and it will add it to our estimates right here, age times gender as our interaction term, and then you could test it individually just like everything else. But thanks for watching.